So guys, welcome to the build portion on the Zvezda kit of the Kamaz 5350 Mustang. Okay, right, instead of just showing you all little bits and pieces getting clipped out, I'll just get into basically how this thing builds up. And I've already spent day one building up um, the engine. Actually, I think I'll explain first of all the tools that I've been using. I'm gonna say straight away, that you want some quick sets. Quick set cement will make the building process a little bit easier and I'll explain why. Um, the very first thing, the very first construction point was the engine. I'm just gonna show you how incredibly well detailed this engine is. Um, everything seems to be built up with some real depth to it I'm surprised actually how impressive that looks everything fits together make sure in some cases i'll just i'll just show you some tips really for you guys the instructions are instructions okay and i'll just explain that in some cases so we find a good example it might be difficult like here's an example this oil filler cap here um, it just sort of it just shows an arrow it's just an indication of where it goes but you can't really tell exactly but if you move down and look at subsequent instruction steps then you can probably work out basically where it goes so look ahead if you don't see exactly where something is it sometimes helps to look ahead so the engine's being built up and that's the first eight steps and there's lots of pieces note here there's an option as well if you're going to do it with the um, cab posed open obviously i'm not so i'll leave that off um, the winch is being built up and i'm just going to show you that component and what i've done i've already attached this onto the ladder frame now to get the string to stick on what i've done is i've super glued it actually basically to the reel so everything is firmly attached it isn't going to on, on on roll itself it's not going to fray it's super glued on now i've got one slight issue at this moment i'm going to be joining the two chassis rails together now with a quick set glue and i'll show you in the instructions as well there's a lot of components get added on now this is not like your icm kit it's more like it reminds me of a mini art kit where parts fit precisely but there isn't any um keyed joining solutions so there isn't anything artificial as in that cross brace is fitted on exactly how the real cross brace would be fitted on the actual vehicle i.e bolted on there's no location tabs or anything like that things fit precisely so make sure you get a bit of purchase on your part so obviously these cross members have gone in that's gone in and they've gone off as well i've allowed them to set so that they've got sufficient strength before i join the two chassis rails together and in addition to that i've looked ahead and i've seen where other bracing components go on because it gets joined up there but all along the side column here you you build up various sub assemblies so i've already worked up on them building up the rear bumper bar the front bumper as well has all been constructed now that's going to allow me to basically make sure that everything is aligned correctly now i have got one issue and i'm not going to say it's the kit it's probably myself i seem to have got, uh, made an error with this part here the framing for the um the winch uh basically inside there i haven't got a join and it's a bit out of line you can see it's actually bent a little bit out of line now what happens is when we join these parts together, I've got firm connection points here. 
at these cross braces but the back I don't it's a bit twisted out so to solve this and this is the problem here this is too long this point here is a bit too long and I'm gonna to have to clip this out and reinforce it so what I need to do is uh, yeah remove some plastic from that brace and then I haven't got a very good joint. I've obviously I haven't got much strength there. I've only got one part joining on. But I'll solve that and I'll show you how in a minute. But that's basically where I, that was about um this was about six hours work. No, it can't have been. About four this was about four hours work to build up these points here. So we'll get these joined together and then we'll move on to the next steps. Okay, so that's the two uh, chassis rail frames joined together now. And I'll just show you, there's a bit of a gap now in between that unit there. Now I can reinforce that with some uh, plastic strip, or I think it's gonna be sufficiently strong as it is really. So this is basically okay, but I wanna tidy that area up. So I'm gonna add some card just into that portion there just on top some little pieces there just to fill those gaps and that will be basically it at the same time I can check my alignments as well um, fortunately there's enough flex the bulk of the members here at the rear portion and the front there's only really the bumper to hold the um, so this basically is the check fit of the front I've made sure that this is pretty well sanded everything's aligned so I can drop glue into here right now and get this permanently attached on so let's just do that now and the way I'm going to do this actually I'm going to attach one side let it set and it doesn't take long because of the quick set cement then I'll go into the other one. Make sure that's all lined up. And drop cement in here. Got a nice firm join there. Hold it in, use a bit of pressure. And that's it. There's the chassis there. And we'll carry on, add on all the other components and then move on to the next stage. Okay, so on the next update, better just tell you straight away what happened. After that last installment, what I did is I joined the two chassis rails together. Now, obviously, I've, I've gone through a lot of steps here to get to this point. But uh, I may as well own up that I totally effed up and... Um, these two cross members here this one and this one and this brace are entirely upside down and that's just by me not carefully studying the instructions and this is the sort of yeah characteristics of some of these kits is that you have you're actually able to install parts the wrong way around because there's no false location tabs or anything but that's just entirely my error and that had a knock-on effect on that transfer case down there that transfer case um, I still managed to install it but it's only supported on one bearer on the chassis rail down there not a biggie but still you know uh, a bit of a mistake yeah anyways happens so this is basically the entire chassis constructed the engine is mounted onto the bearings. The radiator is on there as well. I haven't used any photo etch components at all as of yet. In fact, some of them I've actually chose not to use, which are here. These rear bumper bars, I've got the photo etch parts that replace them. However, if I did do that, I would actually lose detail because there's two small little uh, ring hooks here and uh, those aren't in photo etch and actually this these parts are thin enough so because i couldn't see a benefit in using the photo etch i choose not to use it and um 
I, th I think that's just uh, that's just the way I approach things. If, if, if there's no need for photo etch, I won't use it. I'll use it where it complements the build. So anyway, to so get this stage, basically um, nothing too difficult, just lots and lots of work. So another, I think I put in a good four, four or five, maybe even six hours, six hour shift to get up to this point. But that concludes the chassis. There's nothing really to say. Everything does go together. Um, on here as well, I've got to add on the tow hook. The instructions sort of show you that you can wrap around this this string into the tow hook. You can't do it. You need to get the tow hook, glue it together, drill it out, and then insert the thread. So I'll do that a little bit later on. I just want to say, like, the detail is really stunning. I, I'm Actually, it must be. The engine already was the best that I've ever built, the most detailed. And when you see all the, all the parts, like, just as a for instance, this bearer here, this sort of subframe here, I think they had a lot of collaboration with Kamaz because they just seem, everything looks like real automotive parts. And that's the best way I can put it. And we've also started to add on some of the ancillaries, like the compressed air bottles, the battery case here as well. This is the spare wheel holder. All these parts going at this stage. And there's the support as well for the other um, mud flap there. Um, so every, everything's together. That, that all went together pretty smooth. I'm holding off on putting on the two fuel tanks. And the reason is that, one, I need to tidy up this seam down here. I want the seam totally eradicated. I'm going to clean that off. And in addition to that, I may actually remove these um, representations of the strapping and replace with... There is photo etch for that. But I'm thinking photo etch might not be what I want to use. I think I'd rather use um, some for some styrene card. So I'll just have a think about what I do there. But certainly I want all this seam needs to totally disappear. Because right? it's quite visible as well. And I've got like a bit of a mismatch there. So it's like I'm going to use some detail there and patch all that up. But I'll, I'll cover that when I do. So let's just have a look forward in the instructions. We got up to stage 29 and the next part is going to be construction of the rear cargo bay so i'm just going to sort of fire into that basically not too many steps to do really and there is going to be some photo etch getting added on to some components and i've yet to decide if i replace everything i'll just have an assessment and then i'll tell you guys what i think but so far really stunning model i'm just uh, actually just so impressed at how this is looking at this stage really uh compares to uh it reminds me of a mini art kit in the sort of complexity or even trumpeteer it's it's be, it's beyond it's beyond those actually i would say it's it's really one of the best trucks i've ever built and uh i suppose all the uh tamia fanboys would pretty much run away from something like this because uh yeah it it's not a chore to me, I, I like having lots of parts. I really enjoy it because you get all this detail built up. There's no simplification and everything's there. And you can go beyond this as well because they have got the, uh, they've got these sort of manifolds for where there would be compressed air lines and brake lines. So you could add all that detail in. However, because it's underneath the chassis, I don't see any point in it. I will have a look though at these compressed air bottles see if there's anything obvious in the terms of airlines going and rolling to the chassis if so maybe i'll look to add something there not decided yet so anyways let's crack on and i'll get on to the next stage for you guys okay so let's continue obviously you can see what i've been doing i'll be working on the cargo bay area um also, we're going to use a modular format when we build this. It's going to make painting easier. I'm just going to point some out as well. The location actually onto the um, chassis is really easy as well. So this means that it's, it's going to be easy to paint this as a separate component or to glue it on now. I think, I'm going to, I think I'll keep it as a separate component, but I'll assess things later on. I'll explain how I do so. Now, the last thing I think I mentioned to you was about the um, fuel drums themselves or the gas tanks whatever you want to call them um these i was going to use some styrene strip but actually i had a second look at the photo etch photo etch is really good 
all the seams have been tidied up and those brass um, PE parts add those fixing bands so these can actually get fixed now onto the chassis itself a few more photo etch components i'll just show you underneath here how all this works these uh, mud guards here um, those are the kit ones and then the call out is just for modification of uh, of the kit ones you remove the lower portion and you're actually replacing the rubber um, mud flap sort of component I'm going to put these on a little bit later on. Uh, they go about there. But obviously with that brass part, the problem that I have is sort of resting it against somewhere. The P part's just going to snap off. So everything's gone ahead pretty well here. This was pretty easy to build up. Um, everything fits very precisely, very nicely. There's a couple of options in terms of how you want to have the, the interior as well. You could have... Um, no seats at all but um, or you could do just the side ones or maybe just the middle ones what I've opted for um, and I'm sort of thinking ahead on how I want to display the model I thought basically have the car go in the front portion which would make sense because then the troops could be able to get out and access the cargo and um, no what am I talking about <laughs> cut right <laughs> I've got the troops at the back of the vehicle and the cargo um, sort of here right at the end so that they can get the cargo out so half and half so half load personnel half load of cargo there's some PE details inside there uh, there's some other photo etch parts I'll just show you what you get inside the kit are the actual fuel cans and they've already got a molded on um, retainer they sort of fit onto the front of the cargo compartment but I have these nice photo etch um, containers here. I'll use these and what I'll do is um, probably look to see if I've got any spares that will fit inside these um, holders. And that's basically everything. So um, this one didn't take too long. About maybe, um, I'd say another, it was another day's work. So another four, four hours work to do that. I better explain as well which photo etch I'm not doing. Um, in the P details, it's to replace all these eyelet details on here, but there's no benefit really from the photo etch parts at all. So just, I just keep with the plastic ones where, wherever, really wherever I can. If the detail's better in plastic, I will use the plastic. And the other part as well is these supports for the mud flaps as well. They're called out in PE. There's no advantage to doing them in PE. In fact, you're going to get a, a weaker connection there on the on the joins. So I just keep with the um, plastic parts where I can. And as I said, where it adds detail, I will add it on. So um, let's go on to the uh, cab is the next part and we'll uh, crack on with that and I'll show you how that goes together. Okay, let's talk about the final major sub-assembly, which is the cab, of course. Um, that's the last sort of big part that we build in the instructions. Just show you how all this goes together. Of course, this is a multi-part construction. It isn't one uh, piece. It's made out of multiple components. Straight away, that means that your fit and alignments need to be really good. Now, I have had a few issues, and I'll show you just basically how this is together at the moment. Um, and also you note that I've already got the transparent parts on as well. Now, basically the roof, that's free to come off. And so is the front portion of the cab with all the detail on there as well. I haven't bothered to use the photo etch for the instrument cluster. The decal will do. So here we are. This is the, the basic structure of the cab. And it will sit on the... There's still some bearers and bits and pieces. But basically it sits on the chassis like so yeah basically there's some other parts some other connections now what's happened here is the actual the floor of the cab you can see that they've gone to some length to detail it including these sort of automotive like looking beams and things well straight away i knew that there was an issue with the way these beams sat because in the instructions what they show you is them sort of sitting on 
a point there and also in between there so there was some definite alignment tabs now i'll tell you now those alignment tabs don't work they um the parts won't fit correctly and what i ended up what ended up happening as i looked at the parts when i when i did the work i could see that there were some issues basically on this floor component mainly on this cross beam here it was sticking out too much you can see actually here it's short and here it was long so the cab you can get it all together as as you can see here everything's together but i had to make sure i sanded basically these beams in order to get the side walls to fit properly and then i needed to make sure that I exerted pressure and glue sort of I call it like stitch gluing so i'll fix it at a definite point say the back hold it on there until the glue sort of sets then i'll attach another add some more glue hold it firmly and that's the way i've been able to get this together now everything's all right dimensionally everything's fine and you can tell that basically by um by the way that the roof works it all fits on here like so everything works but making a cab out of multiple components yes you got a much cheaper kit but yeah you can get some issues so it's the first major thing i've run into was this these components here maybe i have made a mistake maybe not i don't know but regardless it is together and i'll show you as well we've added the photo etch detail which is really the um seat belts inside the cab the inside is really well detailed as well so I've got the seat belts there. Obviously, you'll notice as well that the seats as well, each one's different. Each one actually has its own um, mounting sort of location. This one I had a bit of an issue with. I've got a sand away there to allow, I think that's a fire extinguisher, but that sits on like so. If I can get it in there. But I'm leaving all these loose now because I'm thinking about my painting process. Um, so I can't attach the front of the cab on, but I know the fit is good. So I've got separate components here. Notice also the seats are detailed with the seat belts as well. So these will be painted separately. The steering column as well is separate. The doors as well, obviously are separate as well. I'll just show you how good the fit is as well. The, the, um, the detailing on these doors is excellent really. They've even got the um, like side pockets and things like that. Everything just, it just looks right. They look really good. And um, yeah, they, got, they have a really nice fit onto the cab as well. So we can pose these open or closed or whatever, whatever we're going to do. Um, but also, of course, we've fixed in at this stage. We've got the transparent parts already glued in. Why have I done that? I've done that because the masking set that i have includes four interior masks so i should be able to lay down interior and exterior and um, be able to paint this so i'm already thinking about my painting steps so this cab basically is as complete as i'm going to get it at this stage but i'm going to do a final sort of extra like wrap up i'll show you how you know sort of it dry assembles and show you how far i've got and there's a few extra little detail parts and also there's little things that i've neglected to tell you about and actually i'll, I'll tell you one of them now um just so i can remind myself note the exhaust there this exhaust needs to be entirely bored out it's an entirely it doesn't even have any indication of depth to it at all there's not even a shallow hole it's just a flat piece so make sure you um hollow out your exhaust on there that's one thing to notice but I'll, I'll do a final sort of wrap up and also i'll explain also about the way that the um the wheels work because of course we've we've got resin wheels that we're going to use and they're two part as well and notice as well with the mini arm set you only get the front part of the wheel so obviously the back is empty and i'll explain how this works how these parts work so there's still a few few bits that on and i'll wrap this up for you okay so very briefly how you deal with these mini arm resin wheels 
basically you get all the wheels inside the pack the first thing they've got they've got the pouring stub on the bottom that's pretty easy to deal with we can actually just use our sprue cutters to basically pair it off simple as that yeah gone one big blob and it's gone we'll tidy it up and sand that a little bit because that's going to be the flat spot of the tire as well now we need to separate off the hubs the hubs come on uh the pouring blocks as well now the best way i approach this is basically cut these in half like so and then if you see where you're going to separate it is not there but i actually separate it there because that way i can use only half of the um the rim which is the way that we're going to construct these i'll just show you as well just for comparison there's the, Z the zvezda one the zvezda one actually is not bad at all it is multi-part it's got the tire inflator on this one the only sort of construction we need to do we need to glue on the tire inflator um, but to take these off the tool that you should use is basically a razor saw and um, the way to do this easiest way to do this is to basically work your way around so start on one section i've already cut into this as you can probably tell but then rotate it continue rotate again and that way you basically you cut it off more square if you know what I mean and I think is sometimes when it gets deeper and deeper into the resin it gets a little bit more resistance but there we go that's off you don't even need to tidy this up this part of it you don't even because this side it just slips straight in like so so we need to super glue that in like so make sure it's firm inside there then you're good to go simple as that that's how you deal with your resin wheels okay so let's wrap up this build video portion this is basically as far as i can get it at the moment in terms of like my paint plan as well and i'll just explain a few things as well about you know i mean we'll, we'll talk about when we're going into the painting but um in essence what an awesome kit i have thoroughly enjoyed this i've had to plow one all week and um sort of in summary i'm thinking like i've done it over four i started on sunday monday tuesday wednesday thursday so put five nights in it and i've done maybe about i would say maybe about 30 hours 30 hours construction time into this build um yeah there's a lot to it if you like a challenge you'll love it you will absolutely love it and i'll explain some pros and cons about that just in a minute uh, the photo etch i really haven't used that much um and i don't think this is a good example of photo etch so i haven't shown you how how to do any of that maybe i'll add on the wipers but really because the kit just it's just so packed full of detail um and there was sort of stuff that I didn't really want to do. I didn't want to add any of this window frame stuff because I'm worried it'll interfere with the masks and stuff, but that's something to consider. Um, the wiper blades, I'll have a look at, but the kit wiper blades are really good, you know, and they're three-dimensional. Um, I'm thinking maybe to use the, the arms from the wipers and replace the blades with the photo etch portion. Something like that, I'll think about it. But basically i've got parts on the sprue here mirrors um wipers stuff like that really um inside here the doors are loose this air cleaner mounts on like so onto the cab so we're going to put that on separately the steering wheel all the seats are obviously loose items now i've already explained about the resin wheels now it's just explain how these fit on as well because there is a difference so let's take this apart and i'll show you how everything is so cab comes apart and i'll tell you this now they've followed exactly 
the real vehicle. The mounting points are basically those two points at the front there and that there. So there's no compromise given and that makes the alarm, it makes it a little bit tricky to get it around the engine and stuff. You won't see this from ICM. In some ways, it's cool that they do that, but it makes it a little bit difficult maybe to fit that on, but we'll see that because I'm going to have to paint everything before I do that. But in other ways, because remember, you can pose this model cab up and repair in that way it is really really excellent because you've got all the detail there's no compromise on the detail all the stamp pressings the steps everything is replicated so you just need to give them kudos really for that um let's put that cab down there yes uh what else have i done i've added on the mud flaps onto here uh license plate it's going to get onto there so and also I, I, like i explained we'll leave this portion empty there so we can add on some cargo this is the spare wheel and this is included in the mini arm wheel set i wanted to compare it to the one that you get from uh in the zvezda kit which is pretty cool by the way but points to note is this is sort of designed to mount onto here. You see how it's got all the details there on how it would be clamped on. I'm not too sure if that's accurate or not, but uh, no problem at all because there's a very, the mini art, the resin wheel, actually the holes line up with where those bolts would go through. I think that's more accurate. Uh, the other thing as well, because we've used the mini arm wheels, it's interesting as well. I've already shown you how you separate these off but what you have to do you have to use the kit inner portions of the wheel so all these are on they're all mounted on they're all glued on and then finally we will glue the resin wheels on like so so this is the method that we use and i actually really like it because um the mounting is really firm. You're going to super glue these on. And because you've got the, you're using the mounting of the kit, you've got really, you've got a really secure grip to it. There's no butt jointing. There's nothing like that. And it's going to be actually, it's going to be a bit easier to paint because we can paint the wheels entirely separately and then join them on later. So, I quite like that. Anyways, that's the end of the build portion. Hope you enjoyed it. Uh, we'll get on the painting. I'll really crack on with the painting, see what I can do in one week. And see you in the next one.